back at Chatters to another X-Men vs. Sentinel proximity piece unboxing, and it's none other than the Iron Studios 110 scale Havoc. <sighs> I'm so excited for this piece. Um, before we dive in, this piece was, I think it was announced exactly like a year ago. It was like September or October of 2021, and we got it exactly a little less than a year. So it was quite the fast turnover on this pre-order, and it came a little in advance. We got it sooner than what I expected. Um, I did order this through Iron Studios, and we'll dive in more into more details surrounding that. But before we get started, how rude of myself, let me introduce myself. If this is the first time you're finding me, you probably went on the YouTube algorithm and you typed Iron Studios X-Men or Havoc. And here I am. <laughs> uh, I'm not familiar or know if there's any other collectors that have unboxed this already on YouTube. I haven't been present, but hopefully I can bring you some valuable content to support you in considering whether or not you want to nab this piece or not. Um, there is an incredible Facebook group on Facebook. It's X-Men versus Sentinel Iron Studios group. Uh, you can join that group. I'll link it in the description. Um, it's an incredible supportive group as well. If you are collecting this series or you want to learn more about it, um, you can meet like-minded individuals who only share content based on that. I'm a part of that group and I really enjoy it. So without further ado, let's dive in, right? Um, and before we do so, it means the world when you subscribe to this channel. It supports me immensely. It allows me to continue to bring content as well. So kindly hit that, uh, that subscribe button below. Connect with our collective here of collectors. I upload content every Monday and Thursday in order to be notified. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, and click on all bell notifications to be alerted every time I upload content every Monday and Thursday. So we do a little bit of everything on this channel. It's, an, it's definitely not a niche channel um, and it's all about really 90s nostalgia and everything I grew up in love. Um, that's what we have on this channel. So let's go ahead, dive in. So previously last week as well, you can go check my previous video. We just unboxed the Warpath. Now we're doing none other than Havoc. So excited for this piece. So let's go ahead and dive in first with this art box. So as you can see here, uh, this is the new Iron Studios art box as of early, as of January of 2022. This is the new art box. As you can see here, we have a zoomed in version of Havoc. Um, it's going to say Worlds Collect on the side. On the back, it's a zoomed out one tenth scale version of Havoc. And then on the side, it's going to say Havoc. And it's just continuing um, the image from the front of the art box, which I think is really beautiful. What's great about these art boxes is they are themed based on the, uh, the, the superhero costume of the character. So his color theory, his color story, sorry, is yellow and blue. So that hence why the box is yellow and blue. And of course the tops always say the name of the piece, Havoc. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, uh, something I learned from other collectors who were sharing in that group was this piece comes with an arm switch out. So if you don't want his, his ability projecting from his hand, um, you can opt out of that and just put this in regular switch out of it's just his bare hand, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and open this. Also when you open this, always open this side upward where we see Iron Studios logo, that's the side upward you wanna open. I, I, I was traumatized after I opened up the Mojo piece, which came with like 10 pieces, um, and maybe even 12 pieces and Everything was just a complete disaster in that unboxing. I've been so traumatized to open this and I forget how easy these are to build, except that mojo piece, which was an absolute nightmare. This has been like double tape too. That's cute, where's the seam? Never seen this before. All right, hopefully this opens. I double taped this almost as if this was opened before and then they re taped it. Yay! <laughs> All right, so let's see how many pieces. It looks like we have one, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces in total. And it looks like we're going to start with the base first. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, all the bases will just say the name. There is no addition size. If you're curious what an addition size means, where have you, where have you been 
Where have you been? Uh, so an edition size is relative to how many the Collector Studio released of this piece. It allows and supports to really understand the price point and rarity. Unfortunately, Iron Studios never adds edition sizes, not unless it's a very big, big, big Dio piece. They don't typically add edition sizes, but they are small sizes. They basically open pre-orders, and once the pre-orders sell out, that's all they make. And they make a few additional here or there, um, but they um, they do produce a limited amount, and they never re-release any pieces, which is pretty awesome. But they also turn around a lot of various pieces, so go check out their website. You can find so many different canons, uh, shows, movies, um, I mean, just iconic, iconic series that you grew up with, and they, they the Iron Studios designs everything, every every single concept you can think of. They get licenses for so many so for so many franchises so go check them out they're amazing and i think that, that i don't think they are the best 110 scale uh, studio in the world no one can create 110 sketch 110 scale statues like iron studios with the incredible amount of detail in such a small piece that's why i love this series because it allows it's uh, it's i mean it's still expensive these pieces can range anywhere from like 150 to 250 dollars on average some are a lot more than that but you still get incredible, incredible, incredible detail at a fraction of the cost. So that's pretty awesome. So back to this right here. So again, here we have, what seems to be inside the X-Mansion. We have the hand, which was the open palm that's been severed of a Sentinel, which looks incredible. And again, this scale to size is incredible. It's the same scale of the large Sentinels. And that's what I really do appreciate is that the scaling is on, is on par. And that's so, so, so appreciative. Next, we're gonna dive in and we, looks like we have a Havoc's body. Um, I will say the, the base looks clean. Again, the wood doesn't look their best. The wood looks just like the original wood from the first uh, piece that was released, Dio 1. That could be better, the wood, but the Sentinel looks great. Um, and the wood actually has been better, like the Emma Frost piece, I think her base, the wood looked amazing on that. So here we have Havoc. Wow, he looks amazing. His details, he has the gloss on his teeth, the gloss on his tongue. His sculpt looks amazing, the detail of his eyes. I just don't know how they do it. That steady hand that the artist has is just amazing. He looks incredible. Let's go ahead and peg him in first. It's gonna be a quick, easy peg. That's it. So that's it right there as you zoom in on that. That looks amazing. Oh, there seems to be like a little piece of smoke, like white smog, like steam coming out of what seems to probably be the Sentinel, which is exciting. We get his hand. Oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of switch outs here. That's amazing, because we did not know these switch outs were coming. Wow, that is amazing. Wow, 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 wow. I'm just gonna open them all up and then share them all with y'all. That's amazing. You actually get four hands. So you get two switch outs for each hand. I think that's incredible, incredible, incredible. Um, I'm really, really, really impressed with this. Wow, this looks amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, I'm, I'm truly impressed. All right, so there's this little small, like little smog detail. Looks like that's gonna go right there. Yep, and it keys in right there. Uh, there's like some smoke that's coming out of the Sentinel's hand, and then you have the arm. So I'm actually gonna use the switch outs I don't plan on using. So this is just his bare hand here in the back. That's that like that, and then you have the one up front, which goes in like that. It magnetizes, and that looks awesome. It's just havoc. It looks incredible, and I can see anyone use the switch out because the abilities, especially this one, can be a little too cartoony, and that is his ability, uh, and it's gonna take up more retail space. So this is, again, a great Instagrammable piece with the switch out, without the switch out. I think this is incredible, 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 and I appreciate it. Obviously, you're gonna pay a little extra, and I'm pretty sure these switch outs come with a distinction and price point in this piece, but they look, it looks amazing nevertheless. So if you want like a more serious kick-ass form of Havoc, you have him featured like such. Now, if you want Havoc, oh, okay, cool, yeah, his hand goes to the side like that. I had his hand the wrong way. Now, if you rather him with his ability, this is amazing. That 
that <laughs> looks incredible. I really do like the ability in the back. It looks amazing. I love it on Bishop. I, I, I and I'm just I know I'm gonna I love it on him already. I am a little skeptical with the front, but again, you can have the switch out on the back and leave the plain hand up front. That's what's awesome about this is you can manipulate it any which way your heart desires. I'm just trying to figure out how this goes. And it looks like the first way I had it was the correct way. Yeah, that was the correct way. Perfect. And that is the second way. I mean, again, look how much more uh, the piece becomes extended. So again, it just becomes a little bit more challenging to feature, but that does look great. Can't say it doesn't. Wow. This piece is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I'm really impressed. Wow. Let's give this piece my final thoughts and review. I have to, you know, my biggest quorum with this is the base wood. The base looks amazing, don't get me wrong. I love the scale, I love the concept of this, I love the hand open up, it's a different concept that we got in the base. It's inside the mansion. Absolutely love the base. It's again the wood that kills it for me a bit. It could have been made so much more detailed, the splintered wood. Um, it kind of looks like clay and like a nougat, like what you would, the inside of a Milky Way. That's what it looks like. Um, and so because of that, I did that the point out of a perfect 10. It's definitely a nine just based on the base. Then when you come up to his musculature, the detail of the piece itself, how it's keyed in, um, I think that it's it's not as keyed in the best here on this base. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, the back looks amazing. The front leg though, it doesn't peg in just most perfect way, it just doesn't. And then when you come up his jacket, his mouth, the arm switch outs are incredible. It is amazing. I love his jacket, the paints, the sculpt, the texture on his jacket. I mean, the hair looks amazing. I give this piece a solid 8.5. Solid, solid, solid 8.5, going on a nine. I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's the base, right? That really kills this piece for me because even the peg of the foot, it's mainly due to the base. So it's the base that really takes me out of the, 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 the full fantasy. Uh, but nevertheless, I think this piece is amazing. And I'm curious if you own this piece, if you're adding it to your collection. Um, again, Havoc isn't the most popular X-Men character, but he does have an incredible following as well. And he is iconic. Um, he's Scott Summers' brother, for crying out loud. Um, he looks amazing, amazing, amazing. I'm so curious what your thoughts are on this piece. Um, comment below, do you own this? Do you share the same experience as I do? I love to hear your input as well. Um, and don't forget, as I mentioned before, it means the world. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell notification to get notified of upload content every Monday and Thursday. I will be owning, and I currently own, every single piece in this series. I will not stop purchasing this, nor do I have any intention of ever selling it, because there's never been another studio ever in the world of ever, of ex ever, <laughs> that has created a diorama series to this scale. No studio has ever done it. I don't know if any studio will ever do it, ever. Uh, it's just been such a cohesive and consistent series. Um, and I'm gonna own every piece because the market value on this, five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from today, I know this is, this is gonna be a series collectors are just gonna want because no other studios as daring to do something of such a large magnitude. It's never been done before. So I know this is the first of its kind and it's just gonna, I see a lot of collectors sadly parting ways with this piece. They haven't even owned it for a year. Um, and I honestly think it's a poor decision um, and I, I would not part ways with this series at all, at all, at all. Um, it's just amazing. Um, and I, you know, everyone has their own reasons as to why they want to part ways, etc. but, or downsize in their collection, which I completely respect. And I definitely know that this piece is an incredible investment piece, even if you're not too attached to it sentimentally as I am, because I'll never resell it. Um, I do know that the secondary value on this series is going to be epic. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below, subscribe, it means the world. And until the next one, Enchanters, keep collecting over and out.